And so you've been back in the studio and writing. And this view, although we've sort of seen you recently on our screens, obviously in The Voice, your love and your passion is writing and performing. For sure, for sure. I've been seeing all those videos, so I find it's like a collection of different hairstyles. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> it really was. Is that where you're at your happiest, do you think? I think it's the most, um, it's the, my, it's the most favourite thing. I'm so happy with my job because I just get to uh, express myself, complain, investigate and mm. talk about things. And it's like being a wandering minstrel. It's a really ancient job, I think. Town to town, singing songs for yeah. people. Well, it's what you did, though, in December, isn't it? Because did you, did you test out this new material in the, in the States? Uh, to, yeah, to a few of the songs, yes. Um, and, you know, you don't want to play too many new songs and confuse the audience. I don't like that. Here's our new song. People go, oh, where's the hits? But, um, yeah, we always trying to put make a dynamic show and have new songs in as well as the old ones. Mm. And so when you're writing an album, are you talking about things affecting your life at the moment or do you go back? How do you, how do you work that? Where do you get your inspiration? Well, the thing is I write really prolifically, so I write so many songs that I don't ever put emphasis on one song to be like, this is the one that saves me, this is the third single, mm. you know? So I just write a lot of songs. And I think when you do a record, it's very important that it's dynamic, so it has elements of my own life. There's lots of things going on in the world. I've, I have a song um, called People at War, which is about the refugee crisis that I gave to donated to the UN. I did a video for them. I have a song about global warming, which is a hard thing to put into a song because mm. they don't rhyme. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not a good rhyming couplet. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and... That's why there aren't many of them. <laughs> yeah, now I go. get it. I found a way. I found a way. And this is one called Pieces, which which is peace, as because it's obviously such a divided world. We need as much um, togetherness as possible. Mm. So, but there's also, and I think you said publicly that there's still Gwen still influences you. Of course, yeah. I mean, it's impossible. I was with her for 20 years, and so much in the same way. I think for her material, I'm all over that material, and for for me, she's all over mine. It's, it's impossible to separate that. And and you've also said that life is now in 3D. Life is now in 3D because I get the chance to come on to this great show and talk and be more than uh, just a, just bringing out records. Mm. It, or I thought it was always ironic that, I mean, I've done in America like The Tonight Show 15 times, but I've never been on the sofa to talk. Yeah. And I, ironically, then you have the actors who, even though they're very brilliant people, creative, often they don't write their own material. Mm. Right. And they're the ones who get all the talk time and people find out who they are and they become three-dimensional. And us as musicians just stand up, sing a song, thank you, see you later. So is that part of the reason why you took on the, when when you were approached to, to be a coach on The Voice? Is that part of the reason you said yes? Yeah, and it actually began with a cooking show that I'm doing called I Am Feeder, uh, because I wanted to show a different side of myself, write more dimensions, right. and I had everything planned in my life to be busy with music and my kids, and then The Voice came along, and I thought I was being punked. I thought it was like an ant death. Uh, oh, thing. really? Yeah, I didn't quite <laughs> believe it. I was like, what? They've they've got it all wrong, or you know, so. And, and now you're there. You're loving it. I, Great team. I love every minute of it. I mean, I'm so thrilled. My team is incredible. And I'm learning as much from them as I'm trying to impart towards for them. So yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a great situation. You're also learning that the great British public, as wonderful as they are, are very unpredictable. I don't like democracy, I have to admit. <laughs> I'm, I'm not so Name sure about it. I get, worried. <laughs> I get worried about this because um, I took Truly Through twice. Yeah. Because was a, you know, she gave an incredible, blinding performance yeah. of, a, of a million reasons and for some reason wasn't voted through. Mm. And uh, I found that really shocking. So I wanted to protect her to the final so people could warm to her and realise how incredible. I think she's the most complete um, act on The Voice. And then you've got poor Sarah forgot her words. Sarah, well, the thing is, I thought that was really human. I mean, I've, I've done it a couple of times. Everyone has. If you perform a lot, things happen, go wrong. And it's much to the measure of how good you are is how you recover. Mm. The thing is, at 16, I know, it was baby. an awful lot to ask her. She was so composed. She sang the Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You song. And I was just blown away by uh, how composed she was. And in this one where I wanted to step up and show more of her youthful side, yeah. um, it just was a lot to ask. But, I mean, she's, you can imagine, she could work really hard for two years and be 18. Exactly. <laughs> so that's that crazy. She is set. I mean, she's so incredible. And my heart was broken. And again, my faith was lost a little bit at the democratic process when she wasn't voted through. Yeah. Do you, are you surprised at how kind of emotionally 
attached you've become to, to, to your... Well, I had a little sense of it. I did some mentoring for Gwen when, uh, a few years ago on The Voice, and so I got a sense that when you're in there and with them, you know, you can see these shows from a distance and you can either, you know, you can take whatever view you like, but when you're with them, you, you're invested so much in their dream and who yeah, they are and who they want to be that you just feel, and, and, and now to be the actual coach for these uh, uh, contestants, and the, you know, one thing I was worried about, would they want to be on my team? They've got Sir Tom next to me, I mean, who would want to be on his team? So I was so thrilled they even wanted to be on my team. Yeah. And then when you get to know them, it's just, it goes to another level. Like, I, I, I really want to help them as much as I can forever. You, uh, you say that you're, you're an expert in rejection. <laughs> Well, I, you know, like anyone who's had a successful career, it may seem you have a stratospheric, like my first record was, a, was stratospheric, but there was a long time to get to that yeah. point. Yeah. A lot of struggle and learning my craft, and, and unfortunately for me, a lot of it was done in public in terms of being in England and having a band then. So I think that the A&R community were just nervous of, was I, you know, who was I? W w mm. You know, what was my Which potential? is why you now completely understand when they go out of the show, you think, oh my God, I know, I know. what you feel, yeah. I know, I know. what that feels like. Well, that's what I thought was crazy about Sarah leaving the show, is that she has so much potential mm. and she's the beginning of her career. I just thought I had a sure winner. Um, well, like you said, I'm sure we haven't mm. seen the end of her. She's There's no way. So she's job. just beginning. She's 16.